Sit back and throw one back with your pinky in the air and a middle finger to the world. And join me, the eclectic gentleman, Stephen Watts, as we look back on this day in pro wrestling history. But before we do, put that drink down, like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling history on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is May 22nd. And we're going to start off as we always do on a positive note. That's right, these are your pro wrestling birthdays. 1962, The Loose Cannon, Brian Pillman. 1966, second generation wrestler Scott Putzke. 1971, The Luchador known as Halloween. Next, two former talents from TNA that just happen to be Canadian. First, 1977, A1. And 1980, Frankie Kazarian's one lucky dude, Tracy Brooks. Next, 1981, the leader of the Yes Movement, Daniel Bryan. 1985, England's own Hugo Knox. 1987, watch out for the Firefly Funhouse. That's right, Bray Wyatt. And last but not least, 1988, former NWA World's Women's Champion, Santana Garrett. Of course, on the flip side of that coin, your pro wrestling deaths for May 22nd. 2013, England legend, Mick McManus. All right, enough of the sad stuff. It's time to get to the meat and potatoes. That's right. These are your pro wrestling history highlights for May 22nd. And a real short trip in the Wayback Machine today as we start in 1984. NWA World Heavyweight Champion Kerry Von Erich fought Jumbo Turitza to a double countout at 30 minutes and 47 seconds in the main event of an All Japan Pro Wrestling card. Jumping one year to 1985, the Nightmare defeats Terry Taylor in Shreveport, Louisiana for the Mid-South North American heavyweight title. Fast forwarding two years to 1987, NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair defeated Florida Heavyweight Champion Mike Rotundo in the main event of a championship wrestling from Florida event in Jacksonville, Florida. Undercard matches included the Freebirds defeating Sting and Rick Steiner and Dusty Rhodes defeating Big Bubba by a disqualification. 1988, Bobby Heenan pinned Coco Beware at 6 minutes and 5 seconds after hitting him with a foreign object. After the bout, the British Bulldogs came out to protest the decision with Heenan running backstage. 1989 sees Lex Luger defeat Michael Hayes to win the NWA United States Championship in Bluefield, West Virginia. Moving into the decade of grunge, 1992, Smoky Mountain Wrestling crowned their first heavyweight champion in prime time, Brian Lee, in a tournament final, last defeating Paul Orndorff. 1994, WCW Slamboree takes place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Civic Center. In the main event of the evening, Sting defeated Vader to win the vacant WCW International World Heavyweight title after Vader missed a splash. Earlier in the show, it was announced that Rick Rude's title win in Japan over Sting was being overturned due to Rude using the belt as a weapon in the match. However, Sting refused to have the belt handed back to him, so the title was held up for the winner of this match. In truth, Rude had suffered a back injury that would end his active career, and he would never wrestle again. And last but not least, 1995, Jeff Jarrett defeats Razor Ramon to win back the WWF Intercontinental title, only three days after losing it to Ramon in Montreal. This marks Jarrett's third reign with the IC title. Both of these title changes take place in non-televised events. Those were your short but sweet pro wrestling history highlights for May 22nd. I'm the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, and we'll see you tomorrow.